Hey guys, I uh, thought this would be a fun case uh, to review together. So a couple of things going on here, and this may be something that you see in your practices often as well. Uh, so looking at the soft tissue at rest, you can see that this, this right side tends to hang down a little bit uh, relative to the left. And then also on the smiling photo, you can see that the right side is a little bit lower than the left. The muscles in the uh, left area here are more activated than the ones in the right area. But if you just looked at this photo and looked at the front teeth, you'd think like, okay, well, those kind of look pretty straight overall compared to her, her smile. Uh, and if anything, you can see this, this maxillary left lateral is down a little bit lower than the maxillary right lateral. So the question becomes, well, like, how do we treat this case? Do we, we try to match the soft tissue smile? Do we, do we try to make these laterals the same width? Like, how, how do we approach this? So um, one way, one thing that we'll look at is the uh, actual skeleton. And so this is on the cone beam and we've um, oriented this cone beam uh, the way that um, most radiologists do, uh, something that I picked up from uh, Danya to Mimi. Uh, so basically we orient the cone beam based on the eardrums because that's the most uh, reliable um, landmark. So once that's done, it gives us an idea of where this skull actually is. And you can see here that if we look at the maxilla itself, the left side of the skull is more inferior to the right side of the skull, which is, um, you know, which is consistent with what we're seeing with the incisors, but not really what we're seeing with her smile. And so we also notice that she has a fairly sizable uh, jaw size discrepancy here. You can see that the upper, when we measure from the middle of the basal bone, is about 43 millimeters. The lower is about 47. Ideally, we want to see the upper jaw about five millimeters wider than the lower jaw. At this patient's age, she has less than a millimeter of transverse growth left on the maxilla. And so we're not going to get much uh, just through normal growth alone. You can see here that the teeth have compensated the uppers flaring outward. The lower actually in lingual crossbite here has, has tipped buccally. So could you correct this without moving the bones? I'm sure you could. We could tip these in. We could compensate. We could do what we do. Uh, but typically for a case like this, my, my number one choice is going to be expanding and getting the bones as close to as ideal as possible. And when we do that, we have to know how that's going to affect the smile. And so when we look here, if we want to shoot for ideal, let's just say even if we got um, three millimeters over, we're looking at about six millimeters of skeletal expansion, uh, if not six to eight millimeters, depending on the goals and what things are going to look like. So as we expand skeletally to the tune of six to eight millimeters, we are going to see significant uh, advancement and inferior movement of the maxilla just due to the resistance. So the resistance is higher and more posterior. So those areas are going to move less. So we're going to see uh, a drop in the maxilla and the teeth associated. And then also we're going to see that come forward. A little bit of a almost class three tendency. So the forward is going to help us with the case. And then the drop down, we want to make sure that we plan for and manage accordingly. So when we look at what that's going to do to the smile, what we're going to see is that when that expansion happens, this left side typically is going to be dropping down more than the right side. So when we look here, that's the angle that the maxilla is kind of set on the skeletal base. So when that expansion happens, we would expect this left side to drop down more. Um, than the right side. And so when we look at her smile here, that, that may or may not be something that we want to see. So we may have to talk to the patient about like, well, if this smile starts to look slanted the other way, so skeletally we have kind of a cant with the, the maxillary left side being more inferior. And then soft tissue wise, we have a cant of the soft tissue being more inferior on the right side. So it's kind of mismatched there. So the first thing we're going to do is talk to the patient about uh, how they smile. Now, it's possible that because of the way these teeth formed, uh, that they, they, they just started to smile this way because they felt like it looked best, um, or they may be completely unaware. But we're going to um, give them a mirror and show them like, hey, you know, when you smile, try to activate this right side more than you do the left side. And then we're also going to have the conversation before we expand. Hey, look, this is how the changes, uh, these are the changes that you can expect to see. As the jaw expands, you're going to see more of your teeth, which in her case, you know, that part of it will be nice. It'll keep her looking more youthful. She has, you know, uh, at least a millimeter or two more gingiva that she could show. Um, and just to keep her looking younger for longer. But that maxillary true skeletal cant with the left side being more inferior is going to be exaggerated uh, when, when we do that expansion. So those are conversations we're going to want to have up front so that they know what to expect. And if we do need some type of a tad on the left side to bring that side up later, uh, then we'll do that. So then the next question is, well, how do we set up a case like this? So this is the, um, the setup here. And uh, when we're looking at where we want to place these brackets, uh, 
in, in general, I always want to get the teeth as level with the bone as possible. And so you can see here uh, the difference in these anterior teeth, how they're slanted to the right side there. So the roots come in handy for these cases. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of look around at the roots and make sure that the bracket placement is roughly uh, in the right orientation compared to the roots. And you can see here these upper anterior roots, these two to two, you can see that can't. And so we want those brackets to match that can't that we see here on the top. And then looking more toward the back, you can see these are lined up pretty well, so we're not going to adjust those at all. That all looks pretty good. Uh, generally, these second molars, as you'll see, uh, they're, gonna, they're going to tip back. Your prescription will have the upper root tipped forward, the lower root typically tipped back uh, because we tend to see a natural curve of speed at the area of the sevens there. Uh, you can see here, especially on this side, this bracket, if you put the bracket in the right spot, you'll see that the tube is offset to give that distal root tip, mesial crown tip. Uh, in order for those sevens to occlude a little bit better. Um, everything else here, uh, maybe that one you can see a little bit. We could adjust that possibly just a little bit to be more in line with that root there. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the roots off. We're going to take a look at the gingival heights of the brackets. We're going to be doing an expander, so there's going to be bands on these sixes, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Of course, you know, double check if you use multiple bracket systems. These are clear brackets. You can see, make sure that the um, file is correct for the patient's um, desired choice and just put that on your checklist if you don't have it already and then we'll look and see from how much subgingival we're less than a half a millimeter there so that's going to be fine not going to cause any problems less than a half a millimeter there so that's going to be good so now we'll go ahead and take a look at the predicted outcome and I'm going to take the brackets off the first thing I'm always going to do is just look at the arch form here and make sure the rotations are dialed in as ideally as possible and if they're not we'll go ahead and adjust those we'll rotate those out yeah, that looks pretty good there those rotations look good. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the lower jaw. Look for any obvious rotations. The anatomy on this tooth is a little bit different. So we'll have to figure out what's going to be the best position for that bracket. We'll turn the brackets on a little bit. I'm seeing a little bit of rotation here. So we'll just normal rotate it. And then if you hold that shift key and rotate, it's going to make a little custom pad there where the bracket comes off to give us that better rotation there. It's always easier for me to see the rotations without the brackets on. Can also look at the torque and make sure that's set correctly. All right, that's looking pretty good. We can see here, and again with my prescription, these tend to over torque, and so I'm going to grab all these teeth and just, um, and I'm not moving the actual bracket position at all. I'm just reflecting where I anticipate these uh, brackets and teeth are going to end up uh, based on what I typically get out of my prescription. All right, so that would be something typical what I would see from a torque standpoint. And then that'll help us to identify any actual bracket placement um, errors that may be present. So we can see here, and this is probably a torque issue as well. Let's get that down a little bit more. All right. And grab that guy, something like that. All right, so we can see here what we'll do. We have two things. One, we're going to tip this just a little bit here, raise up that mesial marginal ridge. And we can tip this back just slightly as well and move that up. And we may have, yeah, let's see, yeah, we can torque that a little bit the opposite way. Okay, so that's going to be closer to where I would expect that to finish. Here we can see that's looking pretty good. And then we'll go to the maxilla here and turn these off. And I want to see, and you can see that cusp hanging down pretty far. So let's get the torque corrected on these to where we would expect to see that. Same with the premolars, especially with the more gingival bracket placement. The software is going to, uh, in my opinion, overestimate the expression that you're actually going to get. And I do have the, the wires set to my finishing wires, but in my experience, it does overestimate the amount of torque you're going to get on those. So if I see a tooth that's off, I'm just going to adjust it to visualize it in such a way that I would typically see in the mouth. All right, so that looks good. And we'll rotate that just a bit. All right, so that's looking good. Now what we want to see is we want to see that anterior uh, cant correction. So when we scroll back and forth between the, the front to the finish, we want to see that happening. We can see, we, if anything, we have a little bit of overcorrection there. I'm going to add a little bit of, tiny bit of overcorrection here on the other central here. And we're going to bring that down just a bit. And that's looking good. Then that may be slightly more than we need. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and, and just if you hold that control button, you can move the teeth together. So any of those artificial inter uh, interferences uh, in between those contacts, um, you can get rid of those to get a better visualization of what you're setting up there. And let's see if anything that's slightly overcorrected, but I'm just going to take a little bit of that overcorrection out. So you can see here that looks 
pretty good. Uh, as those teeth level out, they're going to level out according to where the bone is. And the patient's going to work on their soft tissue smile. All right, and a little bit of a hanging down cusp there. We'll check out the bracket positions here. The six, I'm just going to set that to ideal. I'm not really worried. You know, obviously, there's not a bracket on it. We're going to get that corrected later. But we'll get that to as close to where we think it's going to be as possible. And on this side here, we'll pull that up just a little bit. Again, just changing the torque visualization so that I can get the most accurate picture of, of where these teeth are going to finish. Same thing here. We'll go scroll back from the before. It helps you to pick up minor discrepancies in, in uh, bracket and root positions. Hold that shift key and you can move those over again if you have too much space between the tooth. So that's looking good. You can turn the roots on and off. You know, things like this, much easier to catch. All right, so it looks like that's gonna be a, yeah, a little bit tricky. So the roots, the roots are a little bit off compared to the crown. So we may, we'll look for wear on the tooth. No, not really a ton of wear either. So we may err on the side of just having that root a little bit more distal uh, so that the tooth looks good with, you know, avoiding a collision. Move that back just a little bit there. All right, and that looks good. Again, you can grab the rest of them and bring them forward there. So that's looking good. That's maybe a little bit high. Let's check our torque, make sure that's close and again this is you can kind of see sometimes there will be those little torquing errors and you'll want to correct that before you do too much else because if you don't then you'll you can see when we correct the torque that height was probably actually pretty close to where it needed to be so that looks good we'll give that just a tiny bit more rotation create the custom pad there holding that shift button so that is looking good all right and once we get there, then we'll go ahead and set our bite and take a look at the occlusion. And that should be just about it. So we'll go to that bite adjust. We're going to go ahead and tip this forward and get this close to where we anticipate it's going to finish. And set that up here, tip that a little bit more. And run that back into a class one. We may need a little bit of IPR in this case. And we'll check the root here. That looks a little bit like it may need mesial root tip, which it can afford. So we'll go ahead and move that. A lot of times it's easiest to see that when in this full occlusal view here where the teeth are coupling. Again, this one I'm just going to move wherever I want it because I'm obviously going to adjust that later with the bracket. But for now, I just want to see where that sets it. And we may need even a little bit more of that curve of speed built into this. So we can look at that, look at the mandible here. Yeah, that's looking pretty decent. We'll turn these brackets off. Again, you'll see those heavy interferences. I'm not worried about that. That can be addressed with IPR later. I'm mostly worried about how the teeth are coupling roughly and any tip issues of any of the teeth. So that looks pretty good. We can take a look at the occlusion and just see if there's any big red flags there. We can see here on the sevens, this is most likely just a torquing issue. So if we torque this back down a little bit and we torque this back up a little bit and let's see it's still on the posterior. So what we may do is on this, uh, let's go back here, bite adjust, turn off that occlusion. Yep, so what we may need to do is tip this back just a little bit more and possibly bring it up a little bit more. Marginal ridge is still looking good. That tooth is still decent. We could probably even bring it down a little bit more. Okay. Perfect. And yeah, I'm not overly worried about, I just want to make sure there's nothing major, major interfering. This will be taken care of with IPR. The premolars are a little bit heavy on that side, so we'll look and see if that's a setup error or a torquing error. And we're pretty even from right to left on our bracket heights on the top and the bottom. 
Can we measure that out? We're pretty close. So that is most likely, let's see, yeah, most likely a torquing error here. So again, we'll visualize that closer to where we expect that to actually be, and then we'll take a peek. And you can see that kind of evens that out quite a bit. So yeah, the bracket heights are pretty good. I wouldn't anticipate there to be any major interferences. And if there was, let's just say that this does end up being a heavy interference. I want the marginal ridges and cuss tips pretty level. So I mean, like you could potentially do a minor equilibration in those areas afterwards to get the bite to settle. Because this tells me like when the when the brackets go where I want them to go, there's there's going to be minimal interferences and and to get me to this occlusion. So um, you know that's basically the goal of of taking the time to do these setups is to to get to the best. Uh, occlusion possible and knowing that if there is an issue it's not your brackets it could be a Bolton issue it could be a you know arch form issue uh, it could be a torquing issue if, the, if some of the torque hasn't expressed but you know it's typically not a, a bracket position issue unless there's you know something obviously off at bonding or you know there's some mistake that happens or broken brackets things like that but it eliminates that variable uh, so after that we'll go ahead and uh, approve the case and we'll get the um, the jigs ordered and uh, get this uh, patient going uh, let me know if you have any questions throw them in the comments I'll try to get to them as soon as I can thanks so much